If your picking looks or sounds anything like this, well then your picking sucks. But lucky for you, I'm here to show you what you're doing wrong, help you change it, and get you picking something like a boss. This is why you suck at playing guitar. Okay, so just to review, this is what your stepdad's picking looks like. Oh, listen to your mother! Oh. And this is how your real dad's picking looks. I love you and I'd never forget your birthday, son. Okay, so it's pretty easy to hear the difference between bad picking and good picking. And the good news is, it's really easy for you to turn terrible, mediocre picking into something pretty dang good if you just pay attention to a few simple things. I'm going to break this down to you guys. What you got to understand is your picking arm and how it affects the movements that you make whenever you're striking the strings. you got to use the right tool for the job, depending on what you're playing. Uh, you got to understand the way your elbow works and the way that your wrist works. Those are the two main parts of our picking arm that are going to control our pick. And depending on which one we're going to use, it's going to make a big difference to your playing. Uh, I like to break this down as the paintbrush versus the pencil. Okay, paintbrush being the elbow, the pencil being the wrist. It's really easy to understand. Let's think about using a paintbrush first. In other words, using the elbow. Let's think about using a paintbrush. Think back to that time, maybe a few years ago, whenever your stepdad forgot your birthday and he had you outside painting that fence, right? You were using a big brush. You're dipping it in the paint, you're making big wide movements with that arm, right? Using the elbow to cover a lot of space really quickly. That is using the elbow, that's using the paintbrush, okay? Let's think about the pencil next, the wrist. Uh, you could think about maybe whenever your dad was uh, making you that birthday card, right? And he was writing maybe nurturing supportive things in that birthday card. He probably set his wrist down on the table used his wrist to control that pencil and write things inside of it, right? That's what the wrist is good at. The wrist is good at making small, precise movements. So again, elbow, paintbrush, big movements, wrist, pencil, small movements, more control. Uh, you got to understand when to use each of those tools in order for your guitar playing to really come together. Let's look at a few different examples of when you would use those, when you'd use the elbow, when you'd use the wrist, and how it can affect your playing, and start making your picking sound a little bit more better. Mm. Okay, first let's take a look at the two basic arm positions that you use while playing the guitar. They are floating and resting. Look at those again. Here's floating. You'll notice that my forearm and my wrist are not touching the face of the guitar at all. And resting. You can see my uh, wrist here is just resting on the pins of the guitar, right about back here. If you're playing an electric guitar, it'll be there where the saddles are, where the strings load to the body, just sitting there, you know, just sitting that wrist down. Depending on what position you're using is going to determine whether your elbow or your wrist is controlling the pick. Okay, the floating position, which is how most beginners play the guitar, is perfect for strumming. Whenever you float, the elbow controls the pick. Look at this. see the elbow is making that pick happen. So again, perfect for strumming. Whenever you're strumming stuff, that is exactly how you should play. However, it really sucks if you try to pick that way. You know, you're doing brain surgery with a sledgehammer then. You can't make small enough movements. Oh, wrist that bad. Oh. You really can't do that. That's what the wrist is good for. Look at this. Here's my wrist sitting on the bridge of the guitar. Here's another angle. Again, you can see, I'm, there, you know, there's no space in between here. I'm sitting on the bridge of the guitar. Whenever you set that wrist down, your wrist takes over. Notice the elbow doesn't move at all. Whenever you set down like this, you really can't use your elbow at all. It pretty much has to come from the wrist. Now, the downfall of this really tight, controlled position is... 
it's really hard to strum. The wrist makes such a small movement that it is kind of hard to freely strum up and down and hit all the strings and stuff. But like I said, while you're picking, while you're trying to hit individual strings and stuff and be accurate with your playing and not play guitar like a goofball, it works much better. You have a lot more control. Let's take an example right here. Let's use both positions while we're playing this Wicked Green Day song. I'm going to start off resting, using the pencil, in other words, using my wrist to control my picking. And then I'm going to go to floating, using the paintbrush, hitting all the strings. Check this out. I'm going to start off resting right here. Again, the control is all in the pick. Using the pencil. Resting on the bridge of the guitar. I'll go to floating now, strumming. Okay, look at the elbow. The wrist isn't involved in this at all. The wrist is just staying loose. So again, the basic idea here is if you're trying to be precise, if you're trying to just hit maybe one or two strings at a time, set that wrist down. Use the pencil. It's going to get you a lot more control. If you're trying to make broad strokes and whack all the strings and strum and sound really great, pound around a big rhythm like that, float. Use the elbow. Use the paintbrush. One more time. If you need precision, rest the wrist. Use the pencil. If you need big motions, float, use the paintbrush. That's really where it's at. Okay, so that pretty well explains why your picking has been sounding so terrible. How to quit picking like a dingus, how to start picking like a boss, and sound pretty wicked with your guitar playing. Let me know if there's any questions that you have, and I'd be happy to answer them. And uh, let me know what other lessons you guys would like to see. I'd love to tell you why your tapping sucks or why your alternate picking sucks or anything like that. So let me know in the comments what you guys would like to see, and I'll happily do that for you. As long as you subscribe to my channel and share this video on your social media network of choice. Thanks so much for watching. Spread the word, and happy shredding. Goodbye!